What's up, what's up, guys? Thank you for joining me uh, for today's cardio session. Um, I'm actually going to talk to you a little bit about some questions that people seem to always ask me. So I figure, why not get to it right here, right now uh, with you? So hopefully you can hear me okay. I got a little lava lavalier mic pinned to my tank top right here, as you can see. So hopefully the sound is really good. Um, if you're uh, if you're tuning in, let me know if the sound is good. So there's no issues with that as well. How you doing, guys? Hi, Courtney. Hi, Dave. All is good here in sunny Los Angeles. What's up, Arnelli? Um, so back here in LA for another few days, and then we're off to Orlando for the WBFF uh, Florida International Pro Am show. I'm actually going to be emceeing. Uh, my fiance and I will be out there in Orlando. Uh, for that show. We've got a really great team of athletes that are competing, which we have coached. Uh, our team is called Legendary Bodies. That is the team that both my fiance and I coach. We coach male and female athletes, and we're darn good at it. Um, Legendary Bodies won the WBFF Team of the Year, um, and it's the, the reigning WBFF Team of the Year because we uh, do a really good job of preparing our athletes to not just win and bring their all-time best uh, performance physically and in terms of um, their posing and whatnot to stage. Hey, my gardeners just showed up. <laughs> They're outside cutting the lawn and I got my dogs here running around. So, um, hi Luna. Hi Novi. So he's not going to bother you. He's just raking the leaves. <laughs> So uh, it's going to be a great show in Orlando uh, this this uh, coming weekend. So tune in. I'm sure they're going to do a live stream of it, which would be really cool. Or if you're in the Orlando area you want to check it out, definitely do so. Um, we would love to have you. Uh, from there, we'll be heading over to Miami and got some work to do there for a little bit. And we'll be there for about another another week or two again, which is always nice. Miami's wide open, LA's starting to open up again, which is fantastic. Getting back to a semblance of normalcy, kind of. Um, but, uh, you know, so it'll be good to get out to Miami again. Um, but today, now that we've got a, a handful of you on, I'd like to talk with you about a, a few things, particularly that um, people seem to ask me quite frequently. Um, one of the things is, um, you know, what is the best way to train for fat loss and so one thing that maybe a lot of people don't know because I didn't really advertise it is uh, hey what's up Jonathan how are you buddy um, is when I prepared for the WBFF USA championship in November December just passed uh, I happened to win that show and I came in ultra lean super lean super tight and you know one of my secrets is that I don't, um, I try not to kill myself going into a show because preparing for a show is, is really stressful. Not only are you training exceptionally hard, but you're in a calorie deficiency. And so your energy is just not there. And the amount of energy that it takes for your body to convert fat into usable energy is exhausting in and of itself. Then working out on top of that is exceptionally exhausting. And so for anybody that's trying to lose weight, they've gone through this before. You know, they've kind of starved themselves and maybe not eaten enough carbs or definitely been in a calorie deficit. And in doing so, it's tiring, it's exhausting. So it zaps your energy and kills your sessions in the gym. And so what I found is by minimizing extraneous activity that I didn't really need to do, um, it was going to serve me well during these times, particularly cardio. Okay, normally I don't do cardio. I rarely, rarely, rarely ever do cardio. I do, I do it with a purpose to increase my VO2 max, keep my heart super healthy. And so I don't get winded when I'm climbing mountains or whatever. 
Um, and so I'll, from time to time, do sprints just to keep that VO2 max up, keep my heart healthy. Um, and Grant, we will talk about skinny fat in a moment. Um, but in terms of like my heart health, I just, I'll do a little bit of cardio to maintain my heart health, but I don't use cardio to burn excess calories. And that's how most people utilize it for. And I think that's the wrong way to use cardio. I think cardio is best used for exactly what I use it for. Keep a healthy heart, increase your VO2 max. But if you're using it to throttle the amount of calories that you're ingesting and burn them off in hopes to create more of a calorie deficit, yeah, it could do that. But I found a better solution, which works exceptionally well, not just with myself, but with my athletes and my clients that I coach. And that is minimize your calorie intake. Just reduce it a little bit. So instead of trying to burn off 300, 400, 500, 600 calories on a treadmill every day and put unnecessary wear and tear on your body, on your joints, simply eat less and make up for that difference that you're trying to burn off. Because you cannot out-train a bad diet. So if you are smashing calories every night before you go to bed, no matter how hard you're training in the gym, no matter how much cardio you're doing, it's gonna be futile. Because it's so much easier to pack on fat than it is to get rid of it. Everyone knows this, they've been through this before. And so, instead of being a hamster on the wheel with low intensity steady state cardio, which is what we're doing right now, known as LIST, low intensity steady state cardio, you don't burn a lot of calories doing this. Instead, modulate your calories, utilize your calorie intake and what you eat on a daily basis to control your fat and your fat loss, okay? So when I came in for that uh, Miami show for the USA Championship in November, I got down to probably sub 4% body fat. I'm not there now. Now I'm probably around six or seven, maybe eight. But I like to carry a little bit more fat while I'm not competing or shooting because it allows me to build muscle easier. It's when you're in a calorie surplus, it's the optimal environment for hypertrophy, which is muscle growth and gain. So when you want to lose body fat, the goal is to be in a calorie deficit, right? This is not new news, everybody knows this. There isn't a human being on the planet that can't escape the laws of thermodynamics, meaning calories in, calories out. It really is that simple. But there's more to it than just calories, which is why I don't prefer diets like if it fits your macros. Hi, Kim, how are you? Long time no see. <laughs> hey, Lou, you, Ulysses. So if it fits your macros, is a diet method that basically says, hey, all you have to do is figure out how many grams of protein, carbohydrates, and fat you need on a daily and eat those regardless of the quality of food. And I have an issue with that because it makes a big difference, your food sources and the effect that it has on your body. So for example, if you need to eat a a couple hundred grams of carbohydrates in a day, there's a big difference between knocking down tablespoons of sugar versus low glycemic carbohydrates like quinoa, sweet potato, maybe brown rice, which is even a little bit more high glycemic than the first two I mentioned. Because the slow acting, the low glycemic carbs are gonna give you the fuel that you need without blowing out your insulin. See, every time you eat high sugar foods, you increase your insulin because insulin gets secreted to pull the sugar out of your blood, pull it into the, and if what is not being burned off, it, it gets rid of it out of your bloodstream and gets stored as, as fat. So anytime you're eating sugar, it's impossible for you to be burning fat. I just want you to know that. So if you're on a fat loss diet, and you're training your butt off, the moment you have high glycemics, 
you shut off your fat burning ca capabilities. So consider this. The best way to train for fat loss oftentimes is known as high intensity interval training. So instead of LIST, which I mentioned earlier, low intensity steady state, high intensity interval training means short bursts of 100% maximal effort with followed by a minute or two of recovery at a very slow pace and repeat the process for a specified amount of rounds, right? So if you're on a treadmill and you could do hit on anything, you could do hit with body weight exercises, with a variety of exercises, one exercise, you could do hit on machines at the gym, you can do cardio hit on any cardio device. It's just a method like Tabata, if you will, right? So if you look at the difference between a sprinter versus a marathon runner, marathon runners are skinny. Sprinters are fucking jacked, <laughs> right? I don't know about you, but I want to look like a sprinter. I don't want to look like a marathon runner who hasn't eaten in a few months. So what's the difference between the two? They're both eating a lot of calories to, to maintain and sustain their training, especially if they're pro athletes or operating on a high level. Well, the difference is the, the exercise, the way that they're training. So high intensity interval training is very much similar to how a sprinter would train. Short bursts of explosive 100% maximal effort energy. Exploding off the line for a 40 yard dash. Taking a couple, couple minutes to recover and doing it again, right? That is in effect high intensity interval training. Whereas a, whereas a marathon runner would employ low intensity steady state cardio and they might run same speed for hours a day to increase their endurance and the longevity and the speed at which they can run. But one form of exercise is much more conducive to muscle growth than the other. HIT is much more conducive to muscle growth than LIS. HIT is also more conducive to increasing EPOC. What is EPOC? EPOC is excess post-exercise oxygen consumption. Very fancy word and acronym for basically stating the amount of calories that your body burns after your workout returning to homeostasis. So what does that mean? That means when you elevate your heart rate and you train in the gym and you really crank and you go hard, it takes a while for your body to get back to its normal resting homeostasis. And throughout that process, the amount of energy expended to get you back to that baseline is in effect your epoch. The amount of energy required to return to homeostasis. Now, add into that when you're weight training and tearing your muscles up, it takes a lot of energy to heal. So I'm sure when you've trained with weights, You've been sore for a couple of days after, right? If you're doing it right, well, your body's healing, right? You have micro tears in your muscle fibers every time you train, and then they grow back stronger, better than before. And you're basically evolving through resistance training, right? And so this soreness, known as DOMS, you know, this soreness is a, it's a good thing. So you're actually healing, not just to become bigger and stronger, but you're burning up calories in the process because it takes energy to heal, to get back into your homeostasis so you're not sore anymore and you can continue to, to go back at it and train again. So this also adds to the amount of calories needed to return to homeostasis, which might take a couple days, the amount of days you're sore. So when you train properly in the gym, whether it's through high intensity interval training or weight training, breaking down your muscle fibers, both of those 
take time to heal and get back to your normal homeostasis and most importantly take energy to do so so you're not just burning the calories while you're on a treadmill doing hit or while you're in the gym tearing up your muscles you're elevating your metabolism the amount of calories your body is calling upon for several days thereafter you will not get this benefit by doing low intensity steady state cardio which is what i'm doing right now the only reason i'm doing this right now is because i want to set an example talking to you guys and i'm letting my dogs run around in the yard while while we're doing so <laughs> so this is something that i will never normally do i will usually if i'm going to do any cardio on a treadmill i'll do hit where i'll do sprints for 30 seconds or a minute bring it back down to a real nice slow walking pace like we're at right now recover for a minute boom and repeat and do it again but in doing this not only will you increase your epoch the amount of calories you burn after your workout for the next day or two but you'll also increase your vo2 max and it won't come at a cost of muscle so when you do low intensity steady state cardio, particularly on a deficit, which most people on fat loss diets do, a lot of times you're not just converting fat to usable energy, oftentimes you're converting muscle as well. Because when you're in a deficit, it, it takes a lot of time. It's, a, it's an arduous process to convert fat into usable energy. If your body can't convert it fast enough, laws of thermodynamics, it needs to pull it from somewhere. So it will actually start converting your muscle into usable energy if it can't convert your fat fast enough, which causes catabolism, meaning you literally start breaking down your muscles and you get smaller, like marathon runners. So getting back to that initial question about what about skinny fat? The best way to overcome being skinny fat is by building muscle. Because when you build muscle, you increase your basal metabolic rate, the amount of calories that your body burns doing absolutely nothing, just existing on a daily basis. When you increase your lean muscle mass, you increase your basal metabolic rate. So if you do not have any increase in calories that you're eating on a daily, but you're training hard and you're tearing up your muscles, increasing lean muscle mass, not only will you gain great benefit from the epoch effect of resistance training, the amount of calories it takes to return to homeostasis and allow your muscles to heal and get stronger, for the next time you do it. That's gonna give you a nice pop in the amount of calories that your body's consuming just to return to that homeostasis. In addition to that, that process creates additional lean muscle mass. So you're slowly increasing your lean muscle mass, getting bigger, which increases your basal metabolic rate, the amount of calories your body burns on a daily basis just to exist. So if you're skinny fat, getting back to the question, resistance training, and you don't have to lift the world, you can utilize time under tension, one of my favorite methods of training without doing massive amounts of weight so you get to preserve your skeletal system, but just increase the amount of time the muscle is under load by doing slow reps, very slow controlled reps slower the better 10 second negatives on the way down 10 seconds boom 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 explode up 10 seconds that's a negative so anytime that you're performing an exercise if you slow it down you'll increase the load or the time under tension this is a great method to use if you don't want to have to lift every weight in the gym <laughs> to tear up your muscles right it's about training smart, and that's how I train. 
I don't try to lift more than anyone in the gym. I don't train with my ego at all. I train very smart. I train just enough to tear the muscle fibers, but not damage the tendons of the skeletal system. And so, that's it. Time under tension is your friend. So if you're skinny fat, you definitely want to start training with resistance and tearing up your muscle fibers to increase your muscle mass, increase your basal metabolic rate. And at the same time in doing so, if you're eating properly, you'll start to, you'll start to get rid of some of that body fat and convert it into usable energy as well. So how much should you eat if you want to gain muscle, but you also want to get lean? It's a good question. Okay. And, and that is a very narrow margin for error. And so that's one of the things that I'm really good at with my clients. So when people come to me, they usually want to put on a little muscle and cut down some body fat. Maybe for the first time in their life, get sub 10% body fat. And it's one of my fortes. It's something that I've been doing ever since I've been a very young man <laughs> with myself and then as an adult with my clients. And so, yes, there's a... There's a, there's a certain way to train somebody for extreme fat loss that is obese. There's a way to train somebody who's skinny fat, who wants to build muscle, get rid of fat. There's a certain way to train somebody who's already really developed that just wants to go to a next level. And there's a way to train athletes. And everyone requires a slightly different method. But when it comes to building muscle and dropping fat, the philosophy and the methods behind it are the same for everybody, even though the plan might be different for everybody. And so ultimately you need to, to really know and have your finger on how many calories you're expending in a day, your TDEE, -E, your total daily energy expenditure, right? So there's cal calorie calculators all over the web that'll help you with that, right? Um, that'll help you determine about what it is your body burns on a daily and by eating just that amount you should maintain your current weight not really any decrease or increase whatnot now if you add into the mix you start training where you weren't before naturally you're gonna start burning more calories it's gonna cause a deficit you're gonna to have to get that from somewhere so it's gonna convert your fat to energy and you're gonna be building muscle because you're training properly to tear those muscle fibers, increasing your epoch as well. More calorie deficit. So if you're skinny fat, I would definitely employ something like that. Right, start training five, five days a week. Take a day, maybe two days off a week, recover, heal. Be okay to do a little bit of high intensity interval uh, cardio during those off days, but you really if you're just starting, you definitely want to only train at 75, 80% of your, your max output because, listen, our minds are a lot stronger than our bodies. And the biggest mistake that most people, when they're first starting, the biggest mistake they make is they come out too hard, guns blazing, and then they get so fucking sore, <laughs> they, they can't imagine working out again for another week. <laughs> it's counterproductive. So pull it back, train 75%. Until you're fully conditioned, usually takes a couple weeks. Once it is, can fully, once you're fully conditioned, boom, hammer it, right? Then you can gradually increase from there, you know, in terms of your time under tension or your load even, right? As you get stronger. So, Tim, you're fat, but you're coming back. Okay. Well, it all starts with action. So, you know, um, during this pandemic, it's been a crazy time for most people. And a lot of people got out of shape because the gyms were closed, right? Um, but at the end of the day, what I found is that whatever it is that you kind of tell yourself that uh, you want, whether you audibly say it or you think it or you simply visualize it, you ultimately materialize those things. I'm a firm believer in the power of thinking. And every year, I kind of take stock and say, okay, you know, most people look at this as kind of a New Year's resolution thing. 
But I do this all the time. I'll think, okay, how do I want to look by this time? What do I need to do to look this way by this time? And, you know, it's one of the reasons why I started competing. Honestly, at this stage in my life, it's not anything that I needed to, to prove per se, but I love committing to something that requires me to get out of my comfort zone and to push myself beyond the brink. Otherwise, uh, there's a cost. And that's why goal setting is so important. And that's how I use competing. I really use it to continuously improve year over year over year. I used to have the fortune to be able to shoot a lot of fitness magazines, but now they're all gone <laughs> because of the digital revolution. And so now I look at shows as the way I looked at you know fitness shoots. It's motivation to continue pushing and to continue improving and just to help hold myself accountable. And for you, Kim, or anybody else out there, you gotta find that thing that you will use to hold you accountable. You know, most people don't worry about getting in shape or their health or weight loss until they have a darn good reason to do so. A wedding dress they want to fit in, a big birthday coming up, they want to look their best. Um, or the doctor tells them, if you don't change, you're going to fucking die. <laughs> Pardon my French. Most people don't until the wheels are about to fall off, right? That's when most people take action because taking action sucks. It's painful, comes at a cost, right? So instead of waiting for that day where it's do or die, I try to encourage people to find that, that why and that motivation to help hold them accountable and continue to light that fire on the daily. And by doing that, it isn't this monumental effort like you know, climbing a mountain when you can barely walk. It's something that you just chip away a little bit every day at, but you've already visualized the way you want to look and, w and you've already planned what it is that you need to get there. And just every day you put the time in a little bit, little bit, little bit, and just know that those little bits add up. Next thing you know, you're at the top of the mountain, but just just as those little bits add up when you make good decisions and you put the work in, if you go on a binge, it can set you back two, three steps. So if you're going to cheat off your, your diet or your meal plan or cleaning, clean eating, you know, don't do it a little bit every meal or every day. Save it for once a week. Earn it. Put the time in. Earn it. Right? So that's the key. You got to stay on point, otherwise you're working hard in the gym, you're eating right most of the time, and then you go to Maggiano's and sh you smash some rigatoni D with, <laughs> with, 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 with the apple cobbler for dessert. <laughs> All bets are off. You're, you're screwed. You just threw the week in the toilet because it's so much easier to gain fat than it is to lose it. That's the way the body's designed, unfortunately, for survival. Okay. Once we our body creates fat cells for storage of excess energy that we're not readily burning off. Once we create those fat cells, they don't go anywhere. They're there. So if you've been obese and you get skinny, those fat cells are still there. They're just deflated because you've emptied them by burning out all the energy inside of them. But it's so easy to reinflate them just by slipping off your, your diet and eating some bad carbs a few days in a row and all of a sudden, boom, you blow it right back up. Putting the yo-yo in yo-yo dieting. You can't get rid of fat cells once your body makes them. No natural way, anyway. The only way you can get rid of fat cells is liposuction, getting them sucked out of you. You can they say burn fat and what's really happening is you're utilizing the energy within the fat cell and converting it burning it off and you're flattening that that fat cell so that it no longer looks plump and fat you just get skinny
but they reinflate so easy, so readily available. So once you have those fat cells, it's hard to keep them flat. It takes a lot of discipline to keep them flat. That's why a lot of people will get that surgery where they reduce the size of their stomach just so they eat less because they feel full and that's part of the issue, you know, psychologically. But I digress. So we're about 30 minutes in. Just finished my little walk here. My dogs are done from running in the yard. If you guys have any more questions, uh, just feel free to DM me, whether it's about building lean muscle, um, dropping a bunch of weight, the best way to do either, what to eat when, anything like that. Here to help. God bless you all. Hope you're having an amazing day. Have a good Monday.